Colorado High School Activities Association Baseball is on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. This morning from Tiger Field in Sterling, it's another Patriot League clash as the visiting Brush Bee Diggers take on the Sterling Tigers. I'm John Beltran. Just making some uh, microphone adjustments here for first pitch. The Bee Diggers had their five game winning streak snapped as they lost to Sterling on Thursday at home by a score of 11 to three. The Bee Diggers at seven and four overall. Sterling has won 10 straight. Bee Diggers starting lineup brought to you by Equitable Savings and Loan. Mobile banking on the go makes banking easier for you when you're on the go. Check them out today. That is Equitable Savings and Loan. Kyle Wellen will be batting first for Brush. Caden Moriarty, the DH at second. Braxton Shelton hits third. Ty Griffith is the cleaner pitter. Hondo hits fifth. Ivan Cardenas sixth. Sam Metlin seventh. As the opening pitch, a strike. Brought to you by Buildings by Design. Quality, commitment, and experience makes Buildings by Design the only choice to, when it comes to your next project. Swung on, grounded up the middle. Backing up is Diorio, the shortstop. He fires to first, and Wellen is out on the second pitch of the game. Noah Soper, the right-hander. Chase Krieger, the eighth hitter, by the way. Caden Schwinn batting ninth. And that'll send up Caden Moriarty. Yeah, this lineup has shifted many times this season. The pitch, fastball is up and away to Caden Moriarty. A huge game here for Brush, considering what happened on Thursday. they got to get back on track. Swung on and driven deep into right center field, but it's playable in the gap in, le in right center. And the ball is caught for the second out. That's Jackson Kyle, who puts it away two down on just four pitches. Here is Braxton Shelton having a huge year. Five home runs to lead the team. Top two in the state in home runs. And the breaking ball is grounded foul up the third base side. No balls and one strike. We'll get to the numbers here coming up momentarily for these B-digger hitters. And the pitch. And the breaking ball is a strike. A beautiful pitch from Soper on the outer half at the knees. And it's 0-2. And, and the offering. Swung on and tapped foul to the left of the plate. Remains at no balls and two strikes here to Braxton Shelton. Two down and the base is empty. In the top of the first inning. And the pitch. And that bounces in. Count moves to one and two. To the senior shortstop. Shelton hitting 500 this season. The pitch. Swing and a foul. Went with a breaking ball. Got the top of the baseball. It stays at 0-2. And it doesn't get much easier for the B-Diggers. They have University coming up. And Sterling will have Eaton next week. Great baseball coming up the pitch. Swung on that ball is laced down the left field line, headed for the corner. It's foul. Oh, man, just foul. Getting slightly out in front of that breaking ball. And it stays at one and two to Braxton Shelton. Two out, bases empty as Soper retired the first two B diggers on just four pitches. One ball and two strikes. Noah Soper, also a senior, looks in. And the pitch. Swing and a miss and a bender in the dirt. They're going to have to throw him out. And Buckley throws to first. And that records a strikeout. And the B-Diggers are retired in order in the top of the first inning. Let's head to the bottom of the first. The B-Diggers don't score. And the Tigers of Sterling are coming to bat on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. John Beltran back in Sterling. The B-Diggers were retired in order in the top of the first inning. Let's get to the starting lineup here for this Sterling Tiger team that put up 11 runs two days ago. Batting first is the center fielder Jackson Kyle. Pitcher Noah Soper hits second. The third hitter is the shortstop Dylan Diorio. Andrew Mike is the cleanup hitter. Batting fifth is Wyatt Buckley, the catcher. Jake Gordon, who drove in four runs on Thursday. The right fielder hits sixth. 
The DH, Robbie Carrasco at seventh. Third baseman, Andrew Scavarda hits eighth. And second baseman, Easton Wilson hits ninth. For the B-Diggers defensively, they've got a different lineup out there. Josh Lancaster's at first base. The second base for Brush is Kyle Wellen. At third is Sam Metlin, Braxton Shelton in between them at short. The left fielder is Caden Schwent and center is Jace Krieger. The right fielder, Ivan Cardenas. Behind the plate is Ty Griffith and Alejandro Matos Garcia, who's done a lot of the pitching this year. Caden Moriarty unavailable due to injury. He can only hit. So Hondo gets the start for Brush with a three and a half ERA. Did pick up the win on Monday in the victory over Lamar, a 10 to six win. He went four innings there before Metlin and Krieger closed it out for the B-Diggers. And here comes Jackson Kyle. He struggled. Despite those 11 runs, he struck out three times, primarily against Shelton in Brush. Kyle is batting 289, hitting for the right side. And Hondo delivers. Fastball is upstairs. A ball and no strikes. The B-Diggers are back in action on Tuesday. Kevin Fergus will have the game at home against University. I'll be back with you in Grayley on Thursday. That's a strike at the knees on the inner half. One with a fastball. The count levels at one and one. Here to Jackson Kyle. A windy, cold morning. The pitch swung on and foul to the screen. Game time temp in Sterling with certainly a breeze. And we've had breeze or wind throughout the course of April. It's 43 degrees. Not exactly baseball weather, but other than that, it's, it's a beautiful looking day. The pitch and the curveball is nowhere near. All the way to the screen. Slipped out of his hand or, or just didn't break. It's two and two. Two balls and two strikes here to Jackson Kyle in the bottom of the first inning. The B-Diggers did not score. The pitch swung on and foul straight back. Challenged him with a fastball up in the zone. Count remains at two and two. This is very similar to the Eaton situation where you go on the road after losing badly at home and you just want to be competitive and hopefully win the game. Curveball swung on and missed down and in and Jackson Kyle has now struck out four times this season against the B-Diggers. And there's one down here for Noah Soper. Soper hitting 389 out of the two-hole. Sterling in their white uniforms, the B-Diggers in their gold with the maroon lettering and numerals in the gray pants. Righty against righty, the pitch. Fastball is outside. One ball and no strikes. To Noah Soper. The pitch. Swung on. Grounded up the middle. The shortstop. Shelton has got it. Sets. Throws. Two down. As Noah Soper is retired. And that will send up Dylan Diorio. Diorio hitting 394. Outstanding basketball player as well. That Sterling team got to the state tournament. What else is new? Tigers finished, I believe, in third place after losing the semifinal to Aspen. Slightly open stance for the right side. Hondo to the plate. The breaking ball is inside. One ball and no strikes. And the thing with Hondo, he was good in the first inning against Lamar, but then after that it was a little bit of an adventure, so it's just not about the first inning. And the 1-0. Fastball is a strike. Home plate umpire is Jeremy Weathers. My former colleague, he is a baseball man. He knows baseball up and down. With two down and the base is empty. And the offering. Fastball swing and a miss. DiOrio way behind that pitch. Cow now sitting at one ball and two strikes. Hondo gets the sign from Griffith. And the offering. Swung on and hit into right field. A check swing for a base hit. He stuck the bat out there, did Diorio. And that is the perfect two-strike approach. Not even a full swing, but he found the gap in there between first and second. And it's a two-out base hit for Diorio. 
Here's Andrew Mygan. That's just a very good pitch there by Hondo. A great job of hitting by Diorio. And Mike has been tearing up the baseball. This kid is on fire, hitting 600 with 23 runs battered in. About a two-and-a-half step lead at first. Hondo to the plate. Swag and a miss. I'll tell you what, hopefully this arm for Hondo stays live the whole game. It looks strong right now. Real strong. No balls and one strike here to, to the cleanup hitter. Andrew Mike, the first baseman today for the Tigers. Hondo near the belt. Ooh, nearly taking off. Throw to first, and that's a late tag. Had Hondo released that baseball a little bit earlier, I think they would have got him. DiOrio is trying to cheat a little bit and not really read the move of the pitcher. He was taking off even before first motion. No balls and one strike. Throw to first, and that's even a closer play, even though DiOrio read it. You do have two down. You retire this hitter. The, the runner at first is irrelevant. No balls and one strike. Hondo stretches. Steps off. You know, I think he's just got to worry about this hitter. Diorio is going to try and play head games here with Hondo. If there's one out or nobody out, you concern yourself with the runner a little bit more, but not with two down. Hondo stretches and the pitch. Fastball is outside. One ball and one strike. With one on and two down. No score. Bottom of the first inning. The B Diggers went three and out in terms of their hitters. Throw back to first back and diving is Dylan DiOrio. Thanks to the weather pot, I'm staying as warm as I can. Thanks to Sumner Rule and the Rule family for supplying that to me a few years ago. Long pause. The pitch. Swung on and fouled back. It's one and two. One more, one more. Right here, yeah, you can tell when the wind kicks up even more because this weather pot will be affected. One ball and two strikes here to Andrew Mike. In the bottom of the first inning, the B Diggers looking to get out of this right now. The stretch by Hondo, throw back to first. Man, he's really preoccupied with a runner. Well, he doesn't want DiOrio to get into scoring position. Pitch number 16 coming up here. Runner goes, swung on and grounded right side and fielded by Wellen to throw to first in time. Wellen was about to cover the bag, but that's a nice athletic play there by Kyle Wellen. And he makes the play. No runs, one hit. No errors and a man left. Let's head to the second in Sterling. Brush nothing, Sterling nothing on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Let's head to the second inning. I'm, my buddy Brad's helping me with the weather pod, so it actually, how about this one? See, that? That's, there's no wind coming in now. No score as we head to the second. Maybe that's not what you meant, but I don't know what I'm doing. All right, all right. All right, let's see the bee diggers can generate a rally here against Noah Soper. As Soper... And the opening inning through just 11 pitches and retiring brush. It'll be Ty Griffith hitting out of the four hole. And I believe that's the first time this season he's hitting out of the four hole. He'll be followed by Hondo. Griffith is hitting 500. Yeah, you certainly would like Ty in a situation where he could drive in some runs, but he is leading off here the inning. Against the right-hander, Soper. Two very solid pitchers for Sterling and him and Diorio. And the breaking ball bounces away. One ball and no strikes. Sterling has won 10 games in a row. There's the pitch. Swung on and fouled off the catcher, Buckley. And the count evens at one ball and one strike. Griffith, Hondo, and Ivan Cardenas in the top of the second inning. Sterling playing their 12th game, as are the B-Diggers, who are 7-4 and four going in. 
And the Bee Diggers have got to get back into the Patriot League thick of it. Swung on and driven in the air to center field. Kyle in the gap. Kyle reaches out and makes the running catch in right center field. Jackson Kyle got a great jump on that baseball. And that type of defense is why Sterling is 10-1. There's one down on a ball that was well struck by Ty Griffith. Here is Hondo. Can't hit that much better. It did stay in the air for a while. Hondo hitting 360. Here's the wine and offering. And the breaking ball is a little bit low. One ball and no strikes. All right-handed hitting lineup except Moriarty. And that's down and away. 2-0 and oh to Alejandro Maltos Garcia. Noah Soper to the plate, and that one's low with a fastball. Yvonne on deck is hitting 370. The Bee Diggers as a team are hitting 380. The pitch, that's a strike. That was there, just above belt level, 3 and 1. Wind and offering. That is a strike at the knees. Bottom of the zone. Soper got the top of the zone and got the bottom of the zone. Three and two with one out of the bases empty here in the top of the second. No score. The offering. Curveball is grounded left side. And the third baseman will throw to first as Andrew Scavarda makes the play. And Hondo is out number two on that chopper to the left side. And here is Ivan. Nice job of Soper coming back from that 3-0 count. And the fastball is below the knees. One ball and no strikes. And that swung on and lifted down the right side. And that's foul. And well out of play. And the count levels at 1-1. One one. Yeah, the B digger schedule moving forward. As we mentioned, they've got University next Tuesday and Thursday. And that fastball's inside. Count moves to 2-1 and one with two down. Nobody on here with Noah Soper retiring the first five B-diggers. The offering. Swung on. Base hit into right field. A two-out base hit for Yvonne. And the B-diggers have their first base runner. That's exactly what Diorio did. The only difference is that Yvonne took a full swing. And here is Sam Metlin batting 333. This B digger lineup up and down, hitting the ball well, but so is Sterling. The pitch swung on and grounded to the second baseman, Wilson, to his left. Tosses to first for the out. And the B diggers are done in the second inning. No runs on one hit, no errors, and a man left. An inning and a half are in the books in Sterling. Brush nothing, Sterling nothing on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. John Beltran back with you as we head to the bottom of the second inning. No score between Brush and Sterling. And the Tigers will be sending up the five, six, and seven hitters against Alejandro Maltos Garcia. It'll be Wyatt Buckley, Jake Gordon, and Robbie Carrasco. Now, again, we got to point out that Hondo was very good in the first inning against Lamar. Two, three, and four were not as solid, so hopefully he gets through this inning as successfully as he did the first. Buckley, right-handed hitter. Open stance, awaits the pitch. Swing and a miss. Hondo with that beautiful fastball threw it right by him. No balls in one strike. Buckley is hitting 360. He's the catcher today for the Tigers. And the offering. Swing and a miss. Fastball above the letters. Well, if you're Hondo, you do one thing. You climb the ladder. If you're swinging at that pitch, you go higher and higher. You can't make this pitch hittable. And the 0-2, way outside. Well, that definitely was not hittable. One ball and two strikes here to Wyatt Buckley. Not just a bank in Colorado, they're Bank of Colorado, a proud supporter of local sports and academics. The offering. 
outside with a fastball. As Griffith had to reach out two balls and two strikes. To Wyatt Buckley to begin the bottom of the second inning. Neither team has had a runner as far as second. The pitch. Breaking ball bounces to the plate. Well, the problem is, is that none of these pitches have been close. Got to throw something that the hitter has to think about. Three and two to Wyatt Buckley. Hondo gets a sign. Hondo to the plate. Swing and a miss. Blow a fastball right by Buckley. And there's one down. Alejandro Maltos Garcia with some big time heat has picked up his second strikeout. Here is Jake Gordon. He had a big game on Thursday with four RBIs, and he's batting 458 out of the number six hole. That's a big strikeout for Hondo to begin the second. And the senior delivers. Swing and a miss. Gordon late on that pitch, 0 and 1. Hondo is working on four days rest after pitching on Monday, and he only went four innings, and the arm looks very lively here in Sterling. The offering, swing and a miss, and a pitch up and in. 0-2. Oh yeah, you basically have your, you don't have your full arsenal of your top three pitchers without Moriarty being healthy. So Hondo and Shelton really have to pick it up. The pitch. Outside. Yeah, that's off the plate. One ball, two strikes. To Jacob Gordon. Griffith lays down the sign. And the pitch. Swing and a miss and a fastball away. Alejandro Matos Garcia, whose season high in strikeouts is eight, has got three. And there's two down. That'll bring up Robbie Carrasco, who did not get the start on Thursday. Hitting 500, but has only got nine plate appearances. And you've got to face a hard-throwing right-hander in this sequence. The pitch. That's a fastball for a strike. Down the middle, thigh high. And it's 0-1. Hondo looks in. Kicks and fires. That's right there. Boy, you, you see two really good pitches there. It's 0-2. Hondo's been a strike-throwing machine in this inning, looking to strike out the side in order. No balls and two strikes. The offering outside. One and two. I know Brush fans want that pitch, but that's not a strike. One ball and two strikes. And the pitch. Swing and a miss, and Hondo strikes out the side in the second. We head to the third and Sterling. No score between the Bead Diggers and Tigers on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. We move to the top of the third inning. No score. Neither team has had a base runner in scoring position as Noah Soper will face the bottom of the order for the Bead Diggers in 8-9-1. and one. Jace Krieger, Caden Schwint, and then back to the top of the order with Kyle Wellen. Both teams have a base hit, Dylan DiOrio for Sterling and Ivan Cadenas for the B-Diggers. Krieger goes into the game hitting 467. Has only had 20 plate appearances, but has maximized those opportunities. As he now hits against the right-hander, Noah Soper. Wind and pitch. And the breaking ball is a beauty right there, thigh high, and it's 0-1. Here to Jace Krieger. And the offering. Curveball is swung on right back to the mound on one hop. Soper backhands, underhands the first. And Jace Krieger is retired. That'll send up Caden Schwint. Hayden batting 227, but his average has actually gone up. It was in the 100s. So hopefully starting to find his groove after a terrific junior year. The pitch that bounces to the plate. One ball and no strikes. 
to Caden Schwinn. We've had lots of high-scoring games in windy weather. So far, no score here. And that bounces in to the catcher, Buckley. Two balls and no strikes. Here to Caden Schwint. Soper kicks and fires. Swung on and grounded weakly left side. The shortstop, Diorio, in the hole. And that's going to be a base hit. He was not going to throw out Caden Schwint. It's off his glove, but that should be scored a base hit. No way he throws him out there. Now with the ball, hit that slowly in the hole. So Kyle Wallen will now hit the bead diggers, now have their second hit. Wallen grounded a short his first time up, and that's the reason DiOrio tried to scoop it, because he knew with a speedy Schwint that it was going to be virtually impossible to throw him out. The pitch swung on and fouled off to the right and out of play. Went with a fastball. No balls in one strike from refrigerators to vacuums and everything in between. They have exactly what you need and service it too. That is B&B &B Appliance and Repair in Fort Morgan. No balls, one strike, one out, one on. Soper to the plate. Runner goes, swung on, laced up the middle. Second baseman steps on the bag, throws to first. That is going to be a double play, or did he not step on the bag? We'll see. Nope, I think Schwint is safe at second. So the play was made by Easton Wilson. He did not step on the bag as Schwint was taking off to second. And now let's see the only way. Yeah, yeah Jeremy Weathers, the home plate umpire, saying that he was actually safe at first. I thought the throw was in time at first. Some confusion out there. Mike Mendenhall, the Sterling head coach, wants some clarification. They called him safe at second. Now, was it an Aaron throw at first? If that's a bad throw, it's an error. Well, they're going to sort this out. Schwint was taking off, and it was a one-hopper near the bag. Wilson was stepping towards the bag, apparently did not get there on time or didn't step on the bag, and then threw to first, and I guess the throw must have been wide because it beat well into the bag. But after initially being called out by the field umpire, home plate umpire Jeremy Weathers said that the first baseman, Mike, was probably off the bag. That's what my guess is from here. So that's going to be scored an error. That's an error. Wellen would have been out on Wilson on the throw. Here is Caden Moriarty. The B-Diggers catch a break. If Caden Schwint is not moving on that baseball, on that pitch, it's going to be a double play, an easy double play. Because Wilson had to rush that throw. K-Dog. Pop to the center fielder. Jackson Kyle on the first. The pitch. And that changeup is in the dirt. Skips away. The third. The throw. And in there is Schwinn. Now the ball gets away into left field. Schwinn to the plate. That throw is going to be late. And a second is Kyle Wellen. And the beat diggers are on the board. They lead one to nothing. It scored a wild pitch. The air's on the third baseman. Wow, what a mess there for Sterling. Two errors in the inning. And it's one nothing bead diggers, and all they did there, and actually, check that. Yep, there's an infield hit by Schwint. And then the air by Wilson. And then the attempted, it wasn't a steal either. And Schwinn took off on the wild pitch. But then the ball got into left field. And it looked like it was a good throw to the third baseman. Andrew Scavarda went off his glove. So two errors by Sterling in this inning. The pitch. That's a strike with a fastball. No balls in one strike. So the bead diggers are on the board first, which did not happen on Thursday. They did score in the bottom of the first after Sterling plated three the pitch swung on and chopped to the first baseman Mike Fowl had plenty of side uh, spin on that one no balls and two strikes here to Caden Moriarty well any way you can score the run you're going to get it that's what Brush just did right there very aggressive base running by Caden Schwint and he was rewarded by scoring. Let's see, just clarifying the count. I've got 0-2. All right, maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. 
Yeah, I've got 0-2. I didn't see the ball, but we'll see. That's why Jeremy Weathers was clarifying the count. But it is two strikes. We know that. The pitch. Swing and a miss and a breaking ball. And Soper strikes out Moriarty. Two down for Braxton Shelton. Shelton struck out his first time up. The stretch by Soper. The pitch. That bounces in. And just about a foot away there for even that. So no advance by Wellen at second. One ball and no strikes. Shelton digging in the stretch. Long pause, the pitch. Swung on and fouled off to the right. Challenged him with a heater and the count is level at one and one. Noah Soper with that strikeout now has two in the game. One and one with a runner at second. Two down. The B Diggers lead one nothing. Top of the third inning in Sterling. Buckley lays down the sign. The pitch swung on and fouled. Went with a bender. And Shelton fought that off. One and two. Braxton trying to extend the lead in the third. Wallen at second. Buckley lays down the sign. Soper gets it. The pitch. Breaking ball is in the dirt. Two and two. That's the pitch he threw Shelton to strike him out the first time, and Braxton was not biting on that one. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, one across with a runner at second. Noah Soper looks in to the plate. And that one bounces up the third base side slightly. First base side, I should say. And Welland to third in the wild pitch. Second wild pitch of the inning. And Kyle Welland with very aggressive base running. That ball got just a few inches away from Buckley. But Welland's got plenty of speed and instinct. Three balls and two strikes. Shelton awaits the pitch. Here it is. Swung on and fouled up the third base side. Went with a curveball again. Yeah, Soper's curveball is pretty effective. It'll remain at 3-2 and two to Braxton Shelton. Yeah, he knows it's going to be tough to throw a fastball behind the pitch. Swung on and driven deep into center field. Kyle's going back. He's got room, and he's going to make the catch. And the beat diggers are limited to one run. In the top of the third inning. Boy, the wind's certainly not blowing out here today for the Bee Diggers. A run on a hit. There were three miscues in the field and one left. Let's head to the bottom of the third. It is brush one, Sterling nothing on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Alejandro Matos Garcia struck out the side in order in the second inning as we head to the bottom of the third. And the Bee Diggers lead one nothing. As Caden Schwinn scored on an error. In fact, that inning was full of errors for Sterling. The B-Diggers did have one hit. The infield hit by Caden Schwinn. And here we go with 8, 9, and 1. That's the situation the B-Diggers had going into the top of the third. Andrew Scavarda. Followed by Easton Wilson. And then back to the top of the lineup in Jackson Kyle. Scavarda steps in, hitting 296. The pitch swung on and fouled off to the right. No balls in one strike. Hondo threw just 30 pitches over the first two. And that's actually, that sounds like a lot, but when you strike out four, he kind of minimized how many pitches he threw as the wind kicks up a bit, the pitch. And that's a strike on the outer half at the knees. Well spotted by Alejandro Matos Garcia. No balls and two strikes. And the offering. That is swinging, a check swing and a miss. That is four strikeouts in a row by Hondo. 
And there's one down, five strikeouts in the game. Putting together an all-star performance so far. And here's Easton Wilson, who with the home, only home run of the game in the 11-3 victory, or at least for Sterling. As Ty Griffith homered for Brush. The pitch swung on. That ball is hit in the air into left field. Schwint to his left. Ranges under it, and he's going to make the grab. Boy, that win certainly moving that baseball around, but Caden stuck with it. Two down. Two down here for Jackson Kyle. So that snaps a string of four consecutive strikeouts by Hondo. And the pitch, and that bounces in. One ball and no strikes. Hondo to the plate. Swung on and driven in the air into right center field. In the gap is Krieger. Still going, still going. And it's in the gap for a base hit. Rounding first and into second is Kyle. He's got a two-out double for Sterling. And that'll set up Noah Soper, who grounded a short his first time up. So Soper will now swing it here for the Sterling Tigers. With an RBI opportunity, the B-Diggers lead one to nothing. In the bottom of inning number three, looking back to the plate, fastball, strike. No balls and one strike to Noah Soper. Griffith lays down the sign. Long pause in the pitch. Swing and a miss. A fastball up and in. Hondo is looking dominant right now despite the double that was just given up. No balls and two strikes to Soper. At the belt, the pitch. That's up and away. Challenged him with another fastball, but he laid off. Count is at one and two. Griffith again lays down the sign. Hondo at the belt. And the one two pitch is not going to be made. Time is called. Yeah, doesn't want. Jackson Kyle to get a running start at all, even though he's ahead in the count at one and two. The stretch by Hondo. The pitch. Swing and a miss on a fastball up and in. And Hondo has done it again. Two strikeouts in the inning and six in the game. A run on a hit. No errors and a man left. Let's head to the fourth inning. Brush one, Sterling nothing on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. All right, we move to the top of the fourth inning. The Bay Diggers have the lead one to nothing against Noah Soper and the Sterling Tigers. It'll be Ty Griffith, Alejandro Matos Garcia, and Ivan Cardenas. The brush run came in the third as Sterling had... Multiple miscues, they had three errors. And the B-Diggers took advantage. Ty Griffith lined to the center fielder, Kyle, his first time up. Fairly quick moving game so far. We played 45 minutes and we're nearly halfway through. Wind and pitch. Swung on and grounded right side. Going to be a tough play. Nice stab by the second baseman, Wilson. And he retires Griffith. That was an excellent play in the hole as the ball was headed for right field. And there's one down. That's a tremendous play by Easton Wilson. Alejandro Matos Garcia grounded to third. 
in his first plate appearance. Wine and pitch. Swung on and lifted a center field. Jackson Kyle's right there. Moves to his left and makes the two-handed grab. Two down. Here is Ivan who singled. Bee diggers don't want to make this too easy right now for Sterling. The pitch, the curveball's a strike. Down the middle at the knees, it's 0 and 1. And the offering. Curveball is down and in, and the count levels at 1 and 1. To Ivan Cadenas with two down and the base is empty. And that is foul to the screen. 0 and 2 to Ivan. Soper working quickly. The pitch swung on and tapped foul along the third base side. One ball and two strikes. Laying down the sign is Buckley. The pitch. Curveball is a little bit high. Oh, man. Wow. That was close. That was very close. Just a little bit high. 2-2 two -two pitch. Called strike three at the knees. And Yvonne is rung up. And Noah Soper retires the side in order. Let us head to the bottom of the fourth inning. The B-Diggers lead Sterling 1-0 on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Let's head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Where the B-Diggers are holding on to a 1-0 lead here in Sterling. And for Brush, and Alejandro Matos Garcia, he'll face the heart of the order, Diorio, Mike, and Buckley. The Tigers have a couple of hits, as do the B-Diggers. As Diorio steps in. Very good ball game so far, but Hondo is pitching one heck of a game. He's not allowing much contact here by these Tigers. Wind and pitch. Swung on and driven foul off to the right side and way out of play. That ball is drifting from left to right. No balls and one strike. Hondo has struck out six in the game. Struck out the side in order in the second. 0-1 here to Dylan Diorio. Well, that's going to take a while for Diorio to get back in. There we go. It's kind of like a major league pause. The pitch. Fastball is up and in. One ball and one strike. Hondo has been pretty spotless through three innings so far. Gets the sign and the offering. Curveball is grounded up the third base side. Fielded by Metlin. Throw to first is low and in time. And Diorio is out. Nice job by Metlin cutting that ball off. He makes the play. And the B-Diggers have played solid defense so far. One down for Andrew Mike who grounded a second his first time up. That's a nice play. Metlin made that look easier than it was because it was chopped slowly on the left side. So Mike now steps in. The pitch. Fastball is right there for a strike. Thigh high. And it is 0-1 to the Sterling first baseman. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. The B-Diggers lead 1-0 on an unearned run. The pitch. Fastball rides inside. And the count levels at one ball and one strike with one out. And the base is empty in the bottom of the fourth inning to Andrew Mike. Hondo looks in. He's really composed in this game. The pitch. Curveball is a beauty on the inner half at the knees. Premier Farm Credit understands production ag. They've been serving their rural communities for over 100 years. Sterling, Fort Morgan, Yuma, and Holyoke. That's none other than Premier Farm Credit. And the 1-2 pitch. Fastball is up and in. And the count levels at two balls and two strikes to the number four hitter in the Sterling lineup. 
Hondo kicks and fires. Swung on and chopped right back off of Hondo's glove. Picks it up underhands to first. And Mike is retired. That's out number two. Here is Wyatt Buckley, who struck out swinging his first time up. What's happening, Aaron? I can, of course I'm on the air. What do you mean? The game is going on. How am I not on the air? <laughs> All right. What am I doing? What do you want? Okay. Here's the pitch to Buckley. And the breaking ball is grounded right side. Second baseman Wellen dives. And it's a base hit into right center field. It's a two-out base hit for Wyatt Buckley. And Sterling has three hits in the game. But they've had those hits with two down and the base is empty. Here's Jacob Gordon who struck out swinging. Yes, Aaron. You can talk to me while I'm calling the game. Huh? I, I can multitask. You know, I, you know I'm in charge, right? You're in charge. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you can tell me the courtesy runner is then. I think that's number one. Castius Combs. See, if you're not going to help me, that's fine. Castius Combs. He had a broken uh, arm, and now he's back in playing. Thank you very much, Aaron. That's uh, Aaron Mendenhall, the wife of Sterling head coach Mike Mendenhall, with some valuable info. Stretched by Hondo. And the offering. Fastball, nice backhanded stab there by Griffith. With Jacob Gordon inside the batter's box. One ball and no strikes. Not too many opportunities for either team. The Bee Diggers took advantage of their only legitimate one in the third. Combs at first. Heck of an athlete. Tremendous wrestler as well. Throw back to first. Pretty good move there. But Combs is back in diving. Again, Hondo has given up those hits with two outs and the base is empty, which is beneficial to him. In fact, all three of them. Two singles and a double with two outs and a base is empty. And the 1-0. Swing and a miss. Jacob Gordon is now at 1-1 one one against right-hander Alejandro Maltos Garcia. Combs with a conservative lead at first. Now about two steps. Two and a half. Griffith lays down the sign. Hondo with a long pause. Hondo with a pitch. Swing and a miss on a fastball tailing away. And it wasn't much of a swing. Jacob Gordon was not sure whether he wanted to swing at that or not. And now it is one and two. Again, the game time temp, 43 degrees, but a lot worse with the wind. Or it feels that way. Well, now at 45, so it's gone up a bit. One and two. The pitch. And that is just below the knees with a fastball. Two balls and two strikes to Jacob Gordon. This is the number six hitter in the Sterling lineup. Hondo. Stretches. Throw back to first. He had him leaning, and the tag applied, but late. Oh, man, Lancaster get, tagged him as quickly as he could, but just a little bit tardy. And if that throw is towards the uh, the first base side a little bit more, they might have had him. Combs was leaning big time. Two balls and two strikes to Jake Gordon. The pitch, that is just down and away. Oh, man, good pitch, but it barely missed. Barely missed there. It's three and two. Robbie Carrasco is on deck. Three balls and two strikes. Combs will be taking off with a pitch. There he goes. And that's in the dirt with a breaking ball. Well, the first walk issued by Hondo. Now, what's not too bad about that is Carrasco's had a limited number of plate appearances and struck him out the first time. That could make him more dangerous, though, as Griffith and Hondo have a brief conversation. So let's see what uh, Carrasco can do against Hondo with brush up one to nothing, two on and two out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Hondo again looks in. The stretch. The pitch. Fastball is outside. 
One ball and no strikes. To Robbie Carrasco. Runner goes. Swing and a miss. Throw to third on the hop and late. And then on the back end, Gordon takes second. Well, this is a huge sequence already in the game in the bottom of the fourth. One ball, one strike, two down. The bead diggers are holding on. They're clinging to a one to nothing lead in Sterling. Hondo out of the windup where he's been very effective so far today. And now he wants a relay of the signs. Wants to make sure they're straight on the signs. Got to stay away from a wild pitch as well. That would tie the game. One and one. The pitch. That is... Wow. That looked pretty good. I guess it was low. It's two and one. Even Griffith thought he was going to get a strike call there. That looked pretty good, but it was called a ball. Two and one. The pitch. That's a strike on the inner half at the knees. I think you just challenge him. Same pitch. You got to challenge Carrasco with that same pitch right now. Let's see what Hondo decides to do. Two balls, two strikes. Wind and pitch outside. Yeah, that missed. That did miss. Three and two. Andrew Scavarda's on deck. You got to get him on this pitch. If not, you're playing with some fire here. Three, two pitch. Swing and a miss, and Hondo strikes out Robbie Carrasco. And Hondo gets out of a major league jam there for the Tigers in the inning. No runs on one hit, no errors, and two left. Four innings are in the books. The score, brush one. Sterling nothing on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. We head to the fifth inning, and the B-Diggers lead the Sterling Tigers one to nothing. And here is Sam Metlin, followed by Jace Krieger and Caden Schwint. Seven, eight, and nine. Here against Noah Soper. Wind and pitch. Swung on and chopped left side. A routine play over at third for Scavarda. And he throws out Sam Metlin one down. Metlin is now 0 for 2. That'll send up Jace Krieger, who bounced to the mound his first time up. We have a pitcher's duel here between Soper of Sterling and Matos Garcia of Brush. And the offering. And the breaking ball bounces in. Soper has thrown only 52 pitches in the game through four and a third. The offering. Fastball strike down the middle at the knees. It's one and one. Here to Jace Krieger. The pitch, that is, wow. I don't know where that missed, but it's two and one. Yep, off the plate. Two balls and one strike. And the offering, that curveball is up and in. Three and one. This is 10-10 KSIR, Brush, Fort Morgan, Weldona. KSIR.com on the TuneIn app. All part of the Eastern Plains Sports Network, and that's off the glove. I don't think he swung at that. Yeah, that's a ball four, even though Jace didn't sell it that well, but it's a walk. These pitchers have been in control. Noah Soper has just issued his first walk. And I believe Hondo only has one walk issued in the game as well. Here's Caden Schwint. And the fastball is strike. Throw back to first and back in standing is Krieger. Caden Schwent singled and scored. He took off to third on a wild pitch, and the ball went into left field. Long pause in the pitch. Low. <clears throat> one ball and one strike. One with a fastball down and in. Sterling is at double play depth right now. With Brush up by a run in the fifth inning. The pitch. Swung on. Lined into the left center field gap. That is trouble. Krieger got a really late jump. And he heads to second. Caden Schwinn now has two hits in the game. 
Yeah, I'm not sure. Jace did not see that ball off the bat at all. He held up thinking it might be caught. And he ends up at second. And here is Kyle Wellen who grounded out and reached on an air. Yeah, that could have been a first and third opportunity there for Brush. Wellen officially at 0 for 2. B-Diggers are looking to tack on to the lead. The pitch. And it bounces in and bounces up the third base side. And the wild pitch advances the runners. So to third is Krieger. And Schwint is at second. Kyle Wellen with a huge opportunity for Brush. One ball and no strikes. The pitch. Swung on and grounded a second. Wilson to the plate. The throw is up the first base side. The slide. He's out. They got him. They did get him. Krieger is out. That fielder's choice will go two. Check that. Four to two. As Krieger is eliminated at home plate. Throw was a little bit low. But a nice job of Buckley applying the tag. And there's two down for Caden Moriarty. So now you've got runners at first and third. Moriarty has popped out and struck out. Well, you make a great defensive play there by Wilson. That's what happens. The B-Diggers were aggressive. That pitch is low. I mean, that was good, solid base running by Krieger. He slid on the outside of the plate, but... The ball just, the tag beat him there. The pitch, runner going, throw to second. It's going to be cut off, and it skips into center field. That's going to allow Schwint to score. It'll be a stolen base well into third. Wow. Well, that is crazy. For the second time in the game, the B-Diggers score on an air, on a throw there. And it's two to nothing. And Cade and Schwinn has scored both runs. Let's see if K-Dog can add to the lead. Man, that is rare. Sterling has made a couple of critical errors on throws to get base runners. And that's why the B-Diggers are on top. The pitch, swing and a miss on a fastball down and in. Two balls and one strike. Brush has played clean defense and Sterling has not. And that's why the game is as it is. Swing and a miss on a bender. And Moriarty did not see that ball out of the pitcher's hand at all. He took a fastball swing at a breaking ball. Two balls and two strikes to K-Dog. Let's see if he can come through here in the fifth inning. The pitch. Swing and a miss on the same pitch. Moriarty strikes out for the second time in the game. But the B-Diggers are back on the board. In the top of the fifth inning. A run on a hit. A huge error. And one left. To the bottom of the fifth, it's Brush 2, Sterling nothing on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. I'm John Beltran back from Sterling where the B-Diggers are getting a gem on the mound from Alejandro Matos Garcia. He is throwing a three-hit shutout as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning and the B-Diggers lead 2 to nothing. Hondo has struck out seven in the game. And all swinging. That tells you something else. Andrew Scavarda, Easton Wilson, and Jackson Kyle against the senior right-hander. Who will be pitching at the next level. Well, definitely playing at the next level and hopefully pitching, especially if he can do what he's been doing today. Here's the wine and the offering. And the breaking ball is right down the middle for a strike. No balls and one strike. To Andrew Scavarda. Hondo on the left side of the rubber. Gets a sign from Griffith. And the pitch. Fastball is upstairs. Count levels at one and one. Wind swirling even more right now in Sterling. The pitch. Curveball is inside. Just missed the corner. It's two and one. 
All three hits for Sterling have come with two down and the base is empty. The pitch, and that's down and away, three and one. Three balls and one strike. Hondo has struck out seven and walked one in the game. And Scavarda's right on top of that plate with a back foot. The pitch, and that's a strike on the outside corner. It's three and two. Three balls and two strikes to the Sterling third baseman. All right-handed hitting lineup for Sterling. Hondo looks in in the pitch. Swung on and grounded right side. A dive by Lancaster. I'm not sure why he did that. The flip the first is high, and the ball gets away into foul territory. I have no idea. Yeah, there is no reason that Lancaster should have even dove for that ball. And with the pitcher covering, the ball was thrown away. That'll be an error. And the first of the game for the B-Diggers. Well, that's some inexperience, even though he didn't make the play. But that was a very high toss there from Wellen, who commits the miscue. Here's Easton Wilson, who popped out. Yeah, I... Yeah, there is a first baseman. You cover the bag and let the second baseman, and that created all types of chaos there. Hondo was there to cover, but the throw airmailed him. Easton Wilson at 0 for 1. The pitch bounces in. Count level at 1 and 1. That's the first base runner Sterling has had with less than two out. It's the Tigers that have that have been committing errors, not the bead diggers until that one there. And the 1-0, down and away. Two balls and no strikes. Brush had a 6-2 lead in Eaton, and we're seeing something that hopefully doesn't happen again when they let that one slip away. Swing and a miss. One with a fastball to Wilson. Two balls and one strike. And there's not been a lot of hard contact against Hondo either. Grounders and pop up here and there. Squaring to Bunt, and that's a strike. Down the middle at the knees. Two balls and two strikes. It'd be huge if Hondo can pick up his A strikeout. Two balls, two strikes. Two to nothing brush, bottom of the fifth inning. A man at second and nobody out. The pitch swung on and popped up. Along the right side, foul territory, Lancaster shading, and it's out of play. It is out of play, and that's the benefit of the wind blowing from left to right. On a normal day, I think he would have been out. Yeah, that no, that's not interference, Coach. That clearly was out of play. That's not interference. Stays at 2-2. Two and two. You can't lobby for that. Well, here we go again with Easton Wilson back in the box. Laying down the sign is Griffith. Hondo to the plate. That is called strike three at the knees. Oh, man, got the bottom of the zone. Strikeout number eight. A little bit of a delayed call, but it's strike three. And here's Jackson Kyle who struck out a double as Easton Wilson goes down. That surprised Wilson. So Scavarda now at second with one out. And the pitch swung on and lifted down the right side. That's going to be a long run into foul territory. Yvonne still going, still going. So is Lancaster, but it just drops for a foul ball. Man, that wind is just picking up that baseball big time. No balls and one strike. The B-Diggers have two runs scored from Caden Schwint on fielding or throwing errors. One was a fielding error. The other was a throwing error. Eight more outs, but these are eight long, tough outs for Brush. And they would like to tack on to the 2 nothing lead, but you're on the field right now. Jackson Kyle one for two after that double. The pitch going to bunt, and he missed it. It was up in the zone. It's 0-2. And if you're wondering about pitch count, Hondo is at 75 right now. 
No balls and two strikes. Jackson Kyle has struck out four times against the Bee Diggers, three times on Thursday and one earlier today. The pitch. Swing and a miss, and he did it again. Threw the fastball right by him. Hondo is strikeout number nine. Two down for Noah Soper, who's grounded out and struck out. Hondo settling in after the error to begin the inning. And Scavarda is still at second. Soper awaits the pitch. Here it is. And that's up and in. One ball and no strikes. You've got some big-time bats coming up in Diorio and Mike, although Soper's hit the ball well this season as well. And the pitch. And the bender bounces in. It's 2-0. and Don't want to mess around with this hitter. You get Diorio to go ahead and run at the plate if... Soper is able to reach. Two balls and no strikes. Two nothing brush. Two down. A man at second. Bottom of the fifth inning. On a 45 degree afternoon in Sterling. The pitch. That's low. Fastball below the knees. It's 3-0. and oh. Well, DiOrio has a hit in the game. And he is standing on deck up the first base side. The offering way outside. Hondo is now... Walked a couple in the game. DiOrio has singled and grounded to third. One for two. Two runs on three hits, an error for Brush. No runs, three hits, four errors for Sterling. The Bay Diggers with three left on base and Sterling with four. And another huge situation. It was second and third with two down when Hondo... Struck out Carrasco in the fourth. Now first and second, two down in the fifth. Pitch to DiOrio. Fastball is up and in. All of a sudden, Hondo losing the zone. One ball and no strikes. The Bay Diggers are going for their eighth win of the season and going for a season split of Sterling. Long pause. The pitch. Swung on, fouled off to the right. Tied him up with a fastball. Count levels at one and one. Solid baseball today. This was a much anticipated matchup earlier this week, and it didn't happen. Sterling won 11 to three, but the rematch has been a beauty. One ball, one strike to Dylan Diorio. Hondo at the belt. To the plate, swung on and lifted foul and out of play. Now counts up. I don't know what Diorio's doing. I'm going to take about 15 seconds here to get back in the box. I mean, you're you know, one and two. Yeah, Diorio takes his. That's that's the major league thing. Take your time after the foul ball, and it, that's that's very smart to do that. Try to throw the pitcher off rhythm. The Oreo settles in the box. Hondo looks back. One two pitch. Swung on and fouled back. Count remains at one and two to Dylan DiOrio. The Bay Diggers are clinging to that two nothing lead in the bottom of the fifth inning. And the one thing you're working up Hondo's pitch count, which is helping Sterling's cause. Griffith lays down the sign. The pitch. Swung on, grounded to the shortstop, Shelton. He'll flip to the second baseman, covering late. Oh, man, late. That'll be a fielder's choice. And the bases are loaded. Wellen didn't get over there quickly. It took him a while. I thought they had him anyway, but... That has scored a fielder's choice, no error. And the bases are loaded for Andrew Mike. Mike is grounded to second and grounded to the mound. That was a huge call out there at second base. Wind and pitch. That's a ball. Outside. Must have missed outside. 1-0. Oh. Wow. That's a huge play at second. But the 1-0 uh, oh pitch. That's a strike. 
Fastball in the inner half. It's one and one. I mean, it was bang, bang. It was bang, bang at second on the underhand toss. But Wellens shaded towards the second base side of the bag. Swung on and fouled. Hondo now ahead of the count at one ball and two strikes. Every time Alejandro Matos Garcia has needed a big pitch, he's come through. Hondo has nine strikeouts in the game. One ball and two strikes with the bases loaded in the fifth inning. And the pitch fouled. Oh, a check swing, a half swing there by Andrew Mike. The only thing here is that Hondo is not going to be able to finish this game. This is going to be the 90th pitch that Hondo throws. A very busy bottom of the fifth inning. Boy, let's see. Don't necessarily go with that curveball. If they go with a curveball, you got to be very careful if you're Hondo and if you're Griffith. The pitch, fastball is upstairs. Two and two. Yeah, I think at this point you stay away. you got to stay away from the breaking ball. I would not call a breaking ball here. His fastball is way too effective. Two balls and two strikes to Andrew Mike. The pitch, fastball is high. And the runners will be going with Wyatt Buckley on deck. Three balls and two strikes to Andrew Mike, who has grounded out twice. Runners go. Swung on and driven in the air to center field. Coming on, still coming. And Krieger makes the catch. The running catch. Knee high for Jace Krieger in center field. On the line drive hit by Andrew Mike. And the B-Diggers escape further damage in the fifth inning. No runs. On no hits. No errors and a man left. Let's head to the sixth inning. The B-Diggers lead the Tigers in Sterling 2 to nothing on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. John Beltran back in Sterling. What a game we've had today between the B-Diggers and Sterling Tigers. The B-Diggers lead 2 to nothing. And while Hondo's got a pitch count issue, Noah Soper does not. He's thrown just 66 Hondo's at 92. So Hondo can throw one more inning, and that's about it. Braxton Shelton has struck out and popped to center. 0 for 2 in this game here against... Noah Soper. Both teams have just three hits in the game, but the B-Diggers have played better defensively. They got away with a huge error to begin the inning on an underhand toss that airmailed Maltos Garcia covering first. Here is Braxton Shelton against Noah Soper. Wind and pitch, and he swings and misses at a breaking ball. No balls in one strike. That breaking ball, very effective for Soper. Gets the sign here from Buckley, the pitch. Swing and a miss. And Braxton was clearly guessing there. He thought that was going to be a fastball. Swung at a pitch in the dirt that glanced off the catcher. No balls in two strikes. Let's see what Soper decides to go with. Swing and a miss on a pitch in the dirt. And they're going to have to throw him out. And out number one is Braxton Shelton on a three-pitch strikeout in the sixth inning. And I think he was looking fastball the whole time. And here is Ty Griffith, who is lined out and grounded out. So Griffith at 0 for 2. The pitch, and that fastball is down and in. Noah Soper has picked up five strikeouts in the game. The offering. That's a fastball for a strike at the knees. One ball and one strike. The B-Diggers scored their runs in the third and fifth innings. Caden Schwint crossed the place uh, the play twice, I should say. The pitch and the curveball is up and in. Ball two, strike one. The question is, who's going to close the game for Brush if they have that opportunity? As Griffith calls time because Soper is... He's just grabbing that baseball and throwing. B-Diggers have to slow him down a bit. The offering swung on and fisted foul up the first base side. Count moves to two and two. Here to 
Ty Griffith, one out, bases empty, top of the sixth inning. Brush is leading Sterling two to nothing. The pitch swung on. That ball is hit in the air into deep left field. That is way back towards the fence, and the wind knocks it down, and it is caught in left field for the second out by Andrew Wright. Yeah, you're not hitting a home run today. The wind clearly knocked that down. That wind just caught a hold of that baseball, and Wright got under it. Alejandro Matos Garcia grounded a third and popped a center. Yeah, the only way you hit it out is if you hit a line drive. The pitch, curveball is a low, just a little bit low. One ball and no strikes. Noah Soper is going to be able to go the distance more than likely, but that could be in a loss. 2-0, 76 pitches deep as Soper. Hondo awaits. The 2-0, swung on and grounded a short. Diorio has got it, sets, fires to first, and the bait diggers are retired in order in the top of the sixth inning. Five and one-half innings are in the books from Sterling. The score, brush two, Sterling nothing on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Let's hit the bottom of the sixth inning. The bait diggers two, the Sterling Tigers nothing. Caden Moriarty's at first base, by the way. So the infield stays the same other than that. Alejandro Matos Garcia has labored in the last two innings as Sterling has stranded five runners in the last two. And here we go with Wyatt Buckley, Jacob Gordon, and Robbie Carrasco. And all the bead diggers have to do is hold this team down. Not easy here, but let's see what Brush could do here with Buckley stepping in. A single and a strikeout prior to that. Hondo's been nails. Nine strikeouts in the game. But Sterling overall stranded seven. Even though five have been in the last two innings. Hondo's thrown 92 pitches, so more than likely this is the last inning. And then Coach Oda will have to decide who closes out this game for Brush. First of all, you got to get this team out in the bottom of the sixth. But what a gem Hondo has pitched. He has thrown some clutch pitches, and Krieger made a nice catch there, running catch in center to close out the bottom of the fifth inning. The offering and the breaking ball is a beauty on the inner half for a strike. Hondo would love to get out of this inning in about eight or nine pitches, but he's got such good strikeout stuff that it usually extends the pitch count. And the 0-1 fastball is away. One ball and one strike. Nine strikeouts and just two walks. Hondo did walk one in that fifth inning. Open stance here for Buckley. On pitch number 95 coming up for the senior right-hander. Here it is. Swung on and tapped third base side. Charging as Metlin. He sets. He throws one out. Oh, that's a beautiful target over there with Moriarty. K-Dog looks like he's eight feet tall over there at first base. And there's one down. Nice easy throw there by the third baseman, Sam Metlin. Here's Jacob Gordon who has struck out and walked. So that's one quick out. Because Hondo's going to throw all 110 pitches or more depending upon how many he faces to the hitter prior to the 110. That pitch is up high. We have played 90 minutes of quality baseball here. There's been a a couple of miscues by Sterling and one by Brush. Actually, they've got four errors in the game. And the pitch. That's a strike at the knees with a fastball. The count levels at one and one. One ball, one strike, one out. Two nothing Brush. Bottom of the sixth inning with the bases empty. Griffith lays down the sign. The pitch. Swing and a miss and a fastball tailing away. One and two. The B diggers hope to tack on more in the seventh once they can retire two more hitters for Sterling in the sixth. The Tigers have won 10 games in a row. They lost to University 6-2 to two to begin the season. The Bay Diggers are looking to put that streak to a halt. Hondo to the plate. Fouled. Oh man, that pitch was up in the zone. And Gordon got a piece of it. Stays at 1-2. and two. Pitch number 1-0-0. Zero, zero. 
100 is coming up now for Hondo. The sign relayed from the dugout. One two pitch. Breaking ball is low. That's a good pitch by Hondo, but it missed. No doubt it missed. Two and two. And he was feeling that one. He felt that one. That's a pitch that has worked for Soper today, undoubtedly. Two balls and two strikes. To the plate. Swung on. Popped up on the right side. Let's see who's going to call for it. The wind is playing tricks. Moriarty up the first base side. And K-Dog makes the catch along the line. That ball was headed towards Welland, but K-Dog made a very intelligent play. He knew that the wind was picking up that baseball, and in fair territory, K-Dog makes the catch. That is a veteran play by a senior first baseman, two down. Yeah, because that thing had all types of trouble written all over it. Here's Robbie Carrasco. He struck out twice. The pitch, fastball is down and away. Well, if you get Carrasco out quickly, you send Hondo out for the seventh, but then you have to take him out. And the pitch, swung on, grounded foul along the third base side, and the count levels at one and one. Brush with a run in the third inning and another in the fifth. Two, nothing, with two down and the bases empty in the sixth. This is the number seven hitter in the lineup, so you get eight, nine, and one if you get him out. The pitch. Swung on and foul to the screen, over the screen. It's one and two. Andrew Scavarda is on deck for Sterling. One ball and two strikes. You can do it right here. Put him away on pitch number 105. The offering upstairs. Well, he'll have to do it on pitch 106. Two balls and two strikes. 65 strikes, 40 balls unofficially. For Alejandro Matos Garcia. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. Hondo retires the side in order. Alejandro Matos Garcia has just picked up his 10th strike out of the game. We head to the 7th inning in Sterling. The B-Diggers hope to add to the lead. It is brush 2, Sterling nothing on 10-10 KSIR. And the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Let's head to the seventh inning in Sterling. The Bee Diggers lead two to nothing over the Sterling Tigers. And here we go with Ivan Cadenas, followed by Sam Metlin and Jace Krieger. Six, seven, and eight against Noah Soper. The pitch swung on and chopped foul along the third base side. Yeah, Soper's performance is going to be unnoticed to the Bee Diggers win this game because he's pitched well, but he pitched into some bad luck. He has not allowed an earned run, and that pitch is in the dirt. The Bay Diggers have scored two unearned runs in this game, but that's all they that's all they might need. Ivan singled and struck out. And the 1-1. That is outside with a fastball, two balls and one strike. On pitch number 80 from Noah Soper. And the offering swung on and lifted down the right field line. That's in foul territory. And look at that win taken. Wow. Two and two. Yeah, if you hit the ball to right center, it's going along the line and right. If you hit the ball to right, it's going to be way foul. That's why the play by K-Dog was big, because that could have been trouble when there was one out in the bottom of the sixth inning. Two balls and two strikes. And the offering, that is right there. Strike three on the outside corner at the knees. Ivan Cardenas strikes out. And that'll bring up Sam Metlin. Soper has picked up his sixth strike out of the game. Metlin has grounded out twice. The pitch, that's right there for a strike on the outer half, just above the knees at 0-1. Metlin grounded a second, his first time up, and a third, his second time up. The offering, outside, and the count levels with one ball and one strike. One with a fastball there. Soper gets the sign to the plate upstairs. Soper just trying to throw pure heat and get back into the dugout. Two and one. The pitch swung on and lifted foul along the left side. Count evens at two and two. It'll be eight, nine and one. Scavarda 
Wilson and Kyle in the bottom of the seventh for the Tigers. The pitch swung on and grounded foul along the third base side behind the Digger dugout. Yeah, the home team in Sterling, they're in the first base dugout. Like you see the Rockies, the B-Diggers at home are in the third base dugout. The pitch swung on and chopped foul up the third base side again. Keeps it at two and two. Your friendly local community bank serving Wiggins and all surrounding areas, High Plains Bank. Swing and a miss on a pitch in the dirt. That's going to be seven strikeouts now for Noah Soper as Buckley throws out Sam Metlin and there's two down. Two down for Krieger. Jace grounded to the mound and then walked. And made a big defensive play in center field in the bottom of the fifth inning. Off the bat of Andrew Mike. Krieger with an open stance. Pitch by Soper. And that is in the dirt. Took something off at one ball and no strikes. This game has moved along swiftly. Two to nothing brush in the seventh. Krieger calls time because he knows that Soper is in a rhythm right now and he wants to throw him off rhythm. One ball and no strikes. And the offering. Swung on and fouled off to the right. Try to tie him up inside. And the count levels at one and one. Caden Schwint has scored both runs for Brush. He waits to hit next. And the offering. Swung on line foul again. Same pitch, same location, same result. One and two. Base hits have come at a premium today. Three for each team. The pitch. Breaking ball called strike three. Krieger strikes out. And that's a great inning for Noah Soper. He strikes out the side. As we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Brush two. Sterling nothing. On 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Sam Metlin is being called upon to close out the game for Brush. A 3.32 ERA. Pitched well. And Lamar got the complete game victory against Faith Christian. That was a 3-2 to two win on a walk-off by the B-Diggers. A couple of Fridays ago. And he will now face Andrew Scavarda. Who has struck out and reached on an air. He's 0-2. Followed by Easton Wilson and Jackson Kyle. This will be a huge win for Brush against a team that has won 10 in a row. They've not lost since the opening game of the season when University beat them 6-2. to two. Close the book on Hondo. Hondo goes six innings, allows three hits, strikes out 10, and walks two. That could be the best outing of his high school career. He had a 2-0 loss to Eaton as a junior to begin the season. That was a great game he pitched as well. Matlin looks in. And the pitch and the breaking ball is inside. One ball and no strikes. Boy, what a tough spot to call Metlin upon. But hopefully he can come through for the B-Diggers. Hondo's now at third base. The offering. And he bounced that one in. Two balls and no strikes. To Andrew Scavarda. Hondo threw 106 pitches. And that's a strike at the knees with a fastball. Ball two, strike one. Metlin with a very easy delivery. He'll challenge the hitters. He's not going to strike out a ton. He'll challenge these hitters, the pitch, and he bounces that one in. Three balls and one strike. Some very tense moments here in Sterling with the B-Diggers up two to nothing. Scavardo waits. And that's a strike on the inner half, three and two. Scavarda's looking for a walk or any way to get on base. Metlin ready. Three, two pitch. That is, oh, just a little bit low. It's a walk. Oh, man, Scavarda's going to reach. Just a little bit low. Here's Easton Wilson, who has popped out and struck out looking. Boy, that was close, but he missed him. Missed that spot there. 
So the leadoff man is on for Sterling. That's only the second time in the game that's happened. The pitch swung on and popped foul and out of play. And you still have to deal with Kyle and Soper. Well, let's see. You get a double play, you don't have to deal with Soper. But right now, you certainly have to deal with Kyle, who's on deck. No balls in one strike. Two to nothing brush. One on, nobody out. Bottom of the seventh inning. Madeline gets a sign. The pitch. And that bounces in. Nice block by Griffith. One and one. Now, this is so tough. I mean, you come into a spot where the starter has pitched so incredibly well. And you've been a position player the whole game, so this is not easy for Sam. This is a huge challenge. The offering up and in with a fastball. It's two and one. And Metlin so far has thrown nine pitches, only three strikes. Two balls and one strike. Scavard at first with a very, very conservative lead. He's not going anywhere unless the ball's hit. The pitch, swing and a miss on a ball diving in the zone. It's two and two. Yeah, you don't want the one hitter up there with two on and nobody out. Got to get the nine hitter now. Got to get Wilson. Metlin at the belt. Metlin to the plate. Swung on and lifted towards right center field. Coming in as Krieger still coming. He dives and the ball is off his glove. It is picked up. Now the throw to second is high and it skips away. It'll be a base hit. Krieger got a little bit of a late jump there. I thought he was going to make the catch, but it's off his glove. First and second here for Jackson Kyle. Oh, man, Krieger kept coming and coming. And the ball, you know that ball's going to sink quickly. And it went off his glove, but it's on the dive. It scored a hit, his fourth hit for Sterling. And now the B-Diggers have some issues to deal with. We're going to have a courtesy runner at first. For, I think, or somewhere. Maybe at second for Sterling. Well, there'll be a courtesy runner somewhere. Castius Combs is going to run. We know that with first and second and nobody out. As the plate umpire Jeremy Weathers charts that change. The 2 nothing lead for the B-Diggers is in jeopardy right now. In the bottom of the seventh inning, Hondo could not finish because... He had almost reached his limit. He had 106 pitches. And you're allowed only 110 with full rest. Castius Combs will be the runner at second. Jackson Kyle has struck out twice and doubled. A double play here would be huge. Get the double play or just get an out. Just any out. The stretch by Metlin. Squaring to Bunt, and he lays it down. Fielded by Metlin. Bobbles picks it up. Throws to first in time. That'll be the sacrifice. The runners advance. Second and third. And here is Noah Soper, who has grounded out, struck out, and walked. Well, they're playing the... This is a huge risk. You're playing the infield in. That's a huge risk. You don't need to cut down the runner at the plate. You're up two to nothing. A blooper is going to tie this game because the infield is in for brush. The pitch. Swing and a miss and a fastball up in the zone. It's 0-1. Yeah, this is a massive risk for brush. If you're up by a run, the infield plays in. But by two runs, well, we'll see what happens. That is a monumental risk here. The pitch. That is down and away. Count levels at 1-1 one and one to Noah Soper. 0 for 2 in the game. We're in the bottom of the 7th inning, and Brush leads 2 to nothing. but Sterling's got two runners in scoring position. Griffith lays down the sign. And the offering. Swung on, lined, foul up the third base side. That got way too much of the plate. Way too much of the plate. Medlin did not locate that ball where he wanted to. One and two to Noah Soper. At third is Combs. Wilson at second. One out, bottom of the seventh inning. And brushes up by two. And the pitch. 
Swung on and chopped over the mound into center field for a base hit. That's going to score a run. That's going to score two runs. It's a two-run single by Soper. Crossing home plate are Combs and Wilson. And that's why if you play the infield in, it's a huge risk. And the game is tied at two in the bottom of the seventh inning. That'll bring up Dylan DiOrio, who has singled, grounded out, and hit into a fielder's choice. Yeah, I mean, if you play the infield in, that's what happens. You have you give no leverage to your infielders. Here's DiOrio. Now the pitcher of record is Sam Metlin. If Sterling scores again, they would rally here in the seventh. The pitch, that is a ball outside. One ball and no strikes. The bead diggers were three outs away, but a, a walk on a 3-2 pitch. A liner out in center off of Krieger's glove. The sacrifice, runner goes, popped up. Let's see who's got this one on the right side. That's going to be trouble somewhere. Yvonne makes the catch in shallow right field. And there's two down. Back to first is Soper. Well, just too bad. But now the B-Digger's best hope is to get to the eighth inning. Andrew Mike is grounded out twice and lined out. Mike has got a big bat, and, and I'm guessing that Soper is going to be going at some point to try to get into scoring position. Matlin stretches. He goes. Down and away. The throw to second is going to be on a bounce, and it's late. It's a stolen base. And if Mike gets a base hit in the outfield, that could win this game. One ball and no strikes. The B-Diggers led 2 to nothing until the seventh inning. Matlin looks in for the sign from Griffith. And the pitch. And that hit him on the left elbow. First and second now for Wyatt Buckley. Buckley has struck out, singled, and grounded out. Buckley at one for three in the game. The B Diggers right now in survival mode, trying to get this game into an eighth inning. Two on, two out, and two across. The pitch, swing and a miss. To the fastball by Buckley, it's 0-1. At second is Soper. Andrew Mike at first. A two-run single by Soper has tied the game in the bottom of the seventh. Soper goes, the pitch is a strike. Throw to third late, and now Mike to second. Well, it is 0-2. Even though you got runners at second and third. All you've got to do now is just get this guy out. No balls, two strikes, two outs. The runner at second means nothing. It's all about Soper at third. With an open stance is Buckley. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Madlin strikes him out. And we are going to an extra inning. Two runs on two hits. No errors and two left. To the eighth we go. Brush two, Sterling two. And we will take a break here momentarily. To get back to our main studio. As the B-Diggers just gave up two runs in the inning. This is 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. It's some extra baseball here in Sterling after the B-Diggers gave up a two-run single to Noah Soper with one out in the seventh. And we are tied at two going into the eighth inning. Noah Soper is still out there because he's thrown just 93 pitches. And he will face Caden Schwint, Kyle Wellen, and K-Dog, Caden Moriarty. Caden Schwint has had the best game on either side. Two for two with two runs scored. And he scored those runs on bad throws. Either way, I mean, there's been two stars for Brush in this game. One is Caden Schwent. The other is Alejandro Matos Garcia with a six innings of three-hit baseball with ten strikeouts 
Unfortunately, the only negative for Hondo, he got into trouble in the fourth, fifth, and sixth innings. And because of that, his pitch count was up. He couldn't close it out in the seventh. And Metlin gave up the two runs. And this is smart. The third baseman, Scavarda, is playing way in. So Caden's not going to be able to bunt the pitch. Bounces in. One ball and no strikes. Here to Caden Schwint. We're in the top of the eighth inning, tied at two. Here's the wine in the offering. Swung on and tapped foul at the plate right off of Schwent. The count levels at one and one. We're in the eighth inning. We have not played even two hours yet. Schwent ready. And the pitch. That bounces to the plate. Well, at some point, Soper's got to get a little bit tired. Let's check out who's the number three pitcher here for Sterling. DiOrio, not available. Well, they've got some options here. The pitch swung on and lifted on the left side of the infield. Let's see the shortstop DiOrio's got a beat on it and makes the grab along the line. One out. And Schwint is retired for the first time in the game. Here is Kyle Wellen, who grounded out, was aboard on an error, and hit into a fielder's choice. He is 0 for 3. Classic baseball game. This is an instant classic here from Sterling. Soper about to deliver his 98th pitch, and it's a curveball in the dirt. One ball and no strikes. Yeah, more than likely, looking at Sterling's rotation, Steven Segge has thrown five times this year. Fastball, a strike at the knees. Yeah, a more than likely, Segge would come in, a senior. And the 1-1. That's low. Two balls and one strike. Soper came in with a 1-4 ERA. Diorio, 1-4-7. Segge at 1. Swung on. That ball is drilled down the left side. If that stays fair, that is trouble. And that is fair just inside the left field line. Well in the round first. He's into second. And the B-Diggers have their first base hit. Since Schwinn came up with a second hit, the fourth hit for Brush. And Wellen with the first extra base hit for Brush. And now a huge at bat coming up for k Dog. It's been a struggle so far for Moriarty today. He's popped the center and struck out twice. More the reason that k Dog is due here against Noah Soper. Big situation here for the B-Diggers. Soper stretches. And the pitch. That's a strike. Went with a breaking ball on the outer half just above the knees at 0-1. K Dog is looking to right field. He knows he can pull this pitcher. He has to swing at the right pitch. That's all it takes. The offering swung on and tapped up the first base side. Foul. And now you know that Soper is going to throw something in the dirt. No balls and two strikes. Shelton is on deck. Yeah, your numbers two and three hitters. Today are O. For six combined. The pitch up and away. Count at one ball and two strikes to Moriarty. One out of man at second. Wellen just doubled. Deadlocked at two in the top of the eighth inning from Sterling. Noah Soper gets the sign. The pitch swung on line into left center field. That's going to be trouble. That's going to find a gap. Wellen is going to step on third. Wellen's going to score. And K Dog to second with an RBI double. And the B Diggers lead. Three to two in the eighth inning. K Dog going the other way. On a ball that was smashed in the gap. Back to back doubles by Brush. We'll see how good of a video I shot there because with my friend Stacy Cyphers, K Dog's mom, listening in, I wanted to shoot that video and it, uh, not bad. I think I got it. I think I got it. So go to a KSIRB106 channel on YouTube, and I'll be uploading that video 
later on this afternoon. But the Bay Diggers have a 3-2 to two lead, and Braxton looking to tack it on. And he, like K-Dog, same situation. K-Dog popped out and struck out twice, just doubled. Braxton Shelton has popped out and struck out twice. Let's see if he can come through. Noah Soper is up to 105 pitches. The Bay Diggers score for the first time since the fifth inning. Back-to-back one-out doubles by Wellen and Moriarty. And Shelton digs into the box. What a great job of going the other way. Take that into left center field. Pitch to Braxton. And that's in the dirt. One ball and no strikes. Yes, Soper clearly has to be getting tired now. One and oh here to Shelton. You need more than one against this team. The stretch and the pitch. Swung on, base hit into center field. Moriarty's going to step on third. He's going to be held up. The ball gets through the infield, and Shelton's going to go to second. Two in scoring position here for Hondo. For check that for Griffith. Big base hit there for Shelton. And now we should have a pitching change off the base hit. That is three hits in a row. And now we're going to have a new pitcher. Let's see if that's, and it will be Steven Seggy. Coming in. Here in the top of the eighth inning. The B Diggers have a three to two lead. With one out, Wellen doubled down the left field line. Moriarty into the left center field gap. And let's see, we'll have positional changes because Segi will pitch. Let's see, Soper's now into the game. I think he's going to take the outfield spot maybe in left or center. Perhaps for Andrew Wright, who was in left. And this is one of the hitters you definitely want up there if you're brushed. Ty Griffith has had another great season. Let's see where they play Soper. He's going to be in the outfield. We'll just see if he's in, in left or center for the Sterling Tigers. And he pitched a heck of a game. But you go that deep, and he just allowed his first earned run. The other two runs that Brush scored were unearned. As I mentioned, Seggy making his sixth appearance in ERA of one, so he's been solid for Sterling this season. The B Diggers have a 3-2 to two lead, and we are in the top of the eighth inning in Sterling as Brush is looking to close it out. All right, Soper was in center. Thank you, Kevin. On Thursday, that's Kevin Fergus who called the game. So I assume they'll move Kyle over who was in center to begin the game. As Seggy about to com complete his warm-ups here. The B-Diggers had three hits in seven and one-third innings and then get three hits in a row from Wellen, Moriarty, and Shelton. A double, a double, and a single. And now looking for more from catcher Ty Griffith. Yep, so... Well, it actually looks like Soper's moving to left. Yep. Yeah, Soper's in left. And now it's a uh, intentional walk to Griffith. You load the bases for Alejandro Matos Garcia. Well, that's a smart play. You know what Griffith, but Hondo, Hondo can break this thing wide open. Hondo can break it wide open. So it's an intentional walk. Bases loaded, one out. Three to two brush in the top of the eighth inning. The pitch, that is down and away. Ball one. Hondo just has to be patient. Hit something in the outfield score, at least a run. And extend the lead and give your pitcher some breathing room going into the bottom of the eighth inning. Seggy gets the sign. And the 1-0. That's a strike. Fastball belt level. Count evens at 1-1 one one to Alejandro Matos Garcia. 
Buckley lays down the sign. Seggy to the plate. Swung on and grounded up the middle. DiOrio's got it to second for one. And back to first. That's a double play. It's a 6-4-3 double play. Hit in two by Alejandro Matos Garcia. And the bead diggers are held to one run in the top of the eighth inning. They do it on three hits. No errors and two left. We head to the bottom of the eighth. It's brush three. And the Sterling Tigers two. As we will take a one-minute break here on 1010KSIR, KSIR.com, and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Let's move on to the bottom of the eighth inning. And the bead diggers are looking to close it out for the second time. Sam Metlin was on the hill with a 2-0 lead after Hondo threw a gem. And now they will face the 6-7-8 and eight hitters. Jacob Gordon, Robbie Carrasco. Carrasco will not hit. It'll be Steven Seggy hitting in that spot instead. And then followed by Andrew Scavarda. Jacob Gordon had four RBIs on Thursday. He's 0 for 2 today. He struck out, walked. And he's popped out. Say it feels like it's warmed up too here in Sterling. We got to be into the 50 degree range at least. That's how it kind of feels. And we're at 49 degrees. Wind and pitch from Metlin. Swung on and fouled to the screen. No balls and one strike. Caden Moriarty has given Brush a three to two lead with an RBI double, scoring Wellen who doubled with one out and the base is empty. No balls and one strike here to Gordon. The pitch outside. And the count levels at one and one. Noah Soper tied the game for Sterling with a two-run single in the bottom of the seventh inning. Wine and pitch. That is just outside again. Two balls and one strike. He walked the leadoff hitter. In the seventh, you do that again, then you're in trouble again. And the pitch. Oh, and he threw that in the dirt. This is 10-10 KSIR Brush, Fort Morgan, Marino. And he walked him on a three. He walked Scavarda on a 3-2 pitch. Now he's 3-1 here to Gordon. Wine and offering. That is a ball up and away. And here's Steven Seggy. And this is clear that Sam Metlin is not on his game. He's usually a strike-throwing pitcher, but not today. Seggy with his first plate appearance of this game. And I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if he's bunting here to move the runner over. Seggy's hitting 174. Jacob Gordon's got some good speed over there. Let's see if there's a bunt situation. The pitch square in the bunt. Lays it up the first base side. That's trouble. And it's picked up by Wellen to toss the first late. It's a base hit. A perfect bunt by Steven Seggy. That'll send up Andrew Scavarda for the second straight inning. Sterling has first and second with nobody out. Well, you cannot walk the leadoff hitter, and Sam has done that back-to-back -back innings. And it's not like he's doing it on purpose, but that, that creates trouble. Scavarda struck out his first time. He reached via the only air by brush his second time and then walked his third time, so he's been on base the last two times. The bead diggers holding on to a 3-2 to two lead in the eighth inning, bottom of the eighth inning. And that bunt was placed perfectly up the first base side, and nothing really... Brush could do, especially with the thicker grass. Stretched by Metlin. Will we have another bunt? That's a possibility. The pitch. That's bunted first base side. That's an excellent bunt. Metlin throws to first for the out, and the runners advance. Now you do have to play the infield in. Those are two fantastic bunts. And you've got the game-winning run at second base. Easton Wilson has popped out, struck out, and singled. A base hit could win the game for the Tigers in the bottom of the eighth inning. 
Matlin will pitch out of the stretch. And the offering. Swung on and fouled back at 0-1. Yeah, now you play the infield in. That's, that's a no-brainer. You have to. You play that infield in, and Coach Hodel encouraging his team to knock it down. Don't let that ball get in the outfield. If it gets in the outfield, this game is over. No balls and one strike to Wilson. The pitch, and oh, it bounced in. What a block by Griffith. Ty Griffith has been outstanding behind the plate today. Nothing is getting by him. One ball, one strike, one out. Two on, three to two brush in the bottom of the eighth inning in Sterling. Sterling has won 10 in a row, the pitch. Swung on, base hit along the left field line. Scoring is Gordon. Here comes Steven Segge. And Sterling has defeated Brush 4-3 to three in eight innings. That's a heartbreaking loss for the B-Diggers. We'll wrap it up in one minute. Sterling 4, Brush 3 on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. The Bay Digger Post Game Show is brought to you by Stubbs Gas and Oil. Fill up your cooler, gas up your car. Stubbs Gas and Oil, easy and convenient. Make them the only stop you need on your way to the big game, Stubbs Gas and Oil. The Sterling Tigers have won 11 games in a row. They rally twice to defeat the Brush Bay Diggers in Sterling, 4-3. to three. The final line score, four runs, seven hits, four errors, ten left on base for Sterling, three runs, six hits, one error, and five left on base. They were down two to nothing in the seventh. Noah Soper with a two-run single to tie the game after the B-Diggers got an RBI double for Moriarty, making it 3-2. to two. Then Sterling came back, another leadoff walk issued in the eighth by Metlin, and then a bunt single by Segi, a sacrifice by Jackson Kyle, and then you had the big two-run single down the left field line. Or check that out, Easton Wilson, Scavarda, I should say, with the sacrifice bunt. And Easton Wilson with a two-run single down the left field line, scoring two runs. And Sterling wins the game 4-3. to three. The winning pitcher was Steven Segge. And the loss went to Sam Metlin. Time of the game, two hours and 13 minutes. And for this Sterling team, they have come up clutch all season which is why they're now 11-1. and one. They're 6-1 and one in league play. The B-Diggers dropped to 4-4 four and four in Patriot League play and 7-5 and five overall. And the B-Diggers somehow have got to come back from this when they take on the University Bulldogs on Tuesday. We know how good University is. They're undefeated in league, in league play, that is, and 9-2 and two on the season. Well, we'll be featuring this game coming up on Monday's edition of 10-10 Preps and more as an instant classic 10-10 preps and more airs weekdays from 1-2. to two. The final score, once again in eight innings, the Sterling Tigers rally to defeat the Brush B-Diggers 4-3 on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network.